Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Microsoft Patch Tuesday webinar from Secunia. This is a webinar about the Microsoft Patch Tuesday from January 2011. This was a very short Patch Tuesday. There were only two Microsoft Bulletin tests, 001 and 002. The vulnerabilities described affect all operating systems, all Windows operating systems, no uh, endpoint <coughs> uh, programs. The consistency, all the vulnerabilities uh, have the same exploit index and exploit code is likely for all issues. So we have to do something about it. All vulnerabilities provide remote code execution upon successful attack and some workaround options are available from Microsoft. Basically, there are two classes of issues that are addressed. One bulletin addresses the insecure library loading class of vulnerabilities. This kind of vulnerabilities is known and heavily publicized since August 2010. One bulletin affects uh, Microsoft data access components with uh, two different flavors. I will dig a little bit deeper into it to give an overview. The goal of this webinar is to give you an overview and how we see the patches released from uh, Microsoft together with our vulnerability intelligence in order to help you address the issues most efficiently and to get the best information out of it. So, quick facts about Microsoft Build 11-001. It's uh, Microsoft Windows Backup Insecure Library Loading Vulnerability. Basically, it affects a Windows Backup Manager when loading a file from an external source, for example, from a WebDAV shell. It affects Windows Vista only, and this kind of vulnerabilities, this class of vulnerabilities is known since August 2010. It affects not only Microsoft programs, but also third-party programs. There's a workaround available, and we talk later about it. The criticality based on Secunia's assessment is high. It allows an attacker to exploit this vulnerability from remote and successful exploitation would provide system access to the affected system. The vulnerability is known since August 26th last year. We are happy to have a, a patch available and you can see here references to our Secunia advisories to the CVE and the Microsoft Bulletin. The second bulletin uh, addresses two different uh, but related vulnerabilities. One is a DSN, this is Data Source Name Signness Error within the SQL Connect API. It requires that the third party program uses unvalidated input to construct a DSN to connect to the database. There's no workaround available at the moment and it affects all versions of the Windows operating system. Again, criticality based on our vulnerability intelligence rating is high, exploitable from remote, and it also provides system access to the vulnerable system. It was disclosed, made public at the day when the patch was available. The other colleague of this vulnerability is a ADO. This is ActiveX uh, Data Objects Memory Allocation Error. This one can be exploited by a malicious web page and the success of exploitation depends on the security settings, for example, of the web browser. There's a workaround available from uh, Microsoft, and <coughs> again, this vulnerability affects all versions of Windows. Criticality is the same, high criticality, exploitable from remote, and it also provides system access. The vulnerability was disclosed or first disclosed together with the patch. So, let's look a little bit into insecure library loading vulnerabilities. This is a class or type of vulnerability that was discovered in mid of last year and it got lots of press attention. So, MS11-001 belongs to this class of vulnerabilities and it affects Microsoft and many third-party programs. The basic issue is when you start a program, it will load some dynamic link libraries or DLLs and an attacker can trick the program and inject his own DLL by putting it on the right path. So, the list of programs that are affected by this kind of vulnerabilities is growing. It's currently at 241 products from 99 different vendors. 
to help you assess the state or the risk from this kind of vulnerability, Sikunia has set up a specific page where we track products from vendors that are affected by this vulnerability. Just go to this web page and you see the latest status on this kind of vulnerabilities. Microsoft provided uh, or still provides a fixed workaround that is available. Basically, this workaround restricts the library search path. The good thing is you can install this fixit and you can select what you want to do. So you can select on a global perspective that all programs are restricted where they load their uh, DLLs from and you can have some exceptions or specific settings on a per program basis. This is very important so you can uh, put very restrictive measures as a default and define some exceptions to make sure that uh, the programs you work with, that you run with, that would not be compatible with this fix, that you can define them as an exception. So we highly recommend that you uh, deploy this fix because it not only remediates the vulnerability, but it also helps you to mitigate the risk from currently unpatched uh, programs and from future vulnerabilities of this class. So there's no reason to believe that this was the last vulnerability affecting a program of this kind of vulnerability class. We recommend that you install this Fixit and also deploy the patch. But this Fixit gives you some uh, time to breathe. The second and the third vulnerabilities are affecting the Microsoft Data Access Components MDEC. MDEC basically provides a consolidated set of functions from the operating system to provide programs access to different kinds of data sources in a consistent manner. So you have different data sources, this can be a SQL database, it can be an access database or it can be a set of XML documents. Microsoft Data Access Components ensures that you have uh, a unique and a consistent way to address and work with different data sources. So with that relations we also use uh, ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. Open Database Connectivity is a common set of, of, of language or protocol to talk to databases. It will subsequently use MDAC functionality. Then we have the ActiveX data objects, the programming interface for ActiveX technology and DSN, the data source name. The data source name basically is kind of a URL to uniquely identify the database that you're talking to. So the attack vectors of uh, the second bullet tab, DSN, some unknown third-party programs are affected or could exploit the vulnerability if a third-party programs uses DSN to address a database and if DSN is constructed in an unvalidated way so that the attacker could inject some code or could inject uh, <coughs> some content that is through the third party program fed to DSN. This is an exploit vector. On the other hand, the second vulnerability of this bullet affects uh, ADO, ActiveX. So ActiveX is usually used through Internet Explorer and other programs. So this gives a high risk attack vector. It could potentially be exploited by visiting a malicious web page. Uh, for one of them, there's a workaround available. However, all the workaround does is not remediating the vulnerability, but it limits uh, ActiveX control access to the MDAC components. Prioritization. All vulnerabilities in uh, this patch, they have the same criticality and the same exploitability index. So the priority primarily reflects what seems most likely to be exploited, but is the easiest attack vector to exploit the vulnerability for an attacker. So with this perspective, we recommend that you prioritize first MS11-002, especially CVE-0027, because the exploitation only requires a user to view a malicious web page, for example, using uh, Internet Explorer. Second priority should be given to MS11-001. The importance 
of applying the patch depends heavily whether or not you have the Fixit tool from Microsoft already in use. As said before, we recommend to install and deploy this uh, Fixit tool as there are other vulnerabilities in, in the future to be expected that exploit this uh, insecure library loading class of uh, attacks. So, we had uh, three vulnerabilities described in two bulletins that are patched on this Tuesday. However, there are two other known vulnerabilities that are still unpatched that are used in the wild that are known publicly that you want to talk a little bit to make sure that you can assess the, the risk of your infrastructure. One is a Microsoft Windows thumbnail bitmap passing buffer overflow. It's a signless error in a function within the DLL that is responsible for passing thumbnail bitmap, bitmaps. So it can be exploited through a specifically crafted thumbnail image. So this is a large attack vector. It affects all Microsoft operating systems except Windows 7 and Windows 2008 server uh, release 2. Criticality is extremely, so extremely means that there's a very, very high risk and that uh, exploit code is very likely to be already around. It can be exploited from remote and it provides system access. The vulnerability was disclosed on January 1st, the vulnerability was disclosed on January 5th this year and there's also a Microsoft advisory uh, available. If you look up the advisory, you also find the workaround. Uh, this workaround or fixit tool from Microsoft basically restricts access to the affected DLL component. We recommend that you have a look at this uh, fixit tool and that you test the uh, compatibility of this uh, restricted access to the vulnerable DLL, whether or not it is compatible with your environment. If there are no issues, we highly recommend that you deploy this fixit tool to mitigate the vulnerability until a patch is available. Another vulnerability affects Internet Explorer and the way how cascading style sheets are uh, processed with the import. It's a use of the free vulnerability and it can ex be exploited, for example, through specifically crafted uh, cascading style sheet files that contain multiple import rules. This vulnerability affects Internet Explorer 6, 7 and 8 and according to Microsoft, the vulnerability is already actively exploited. Again, this is an extremely critical vulnerability. It's exploitable from remote and provides system access to the attacker upon successful exploitation. The vulnerability was disclosed in mid-December last year and there's also a Fixit tool available from Microsoft. Basically, the Fixit tool adds a check of whether cascading style sheets are loaded recursively and it would then stop this loading in order to prevent the exploitation of this vulnerability. So, in summary, for your courtesy, uh, we provide a, a small matrix where you have all the critical information about this patch day. It's the name of the build day, the CV identifies the uh, respective uh, security advisory our security rating, criticality rating, and what are the affected programs. So, thank you very much for your attention. I hope this information was useful to you to get a quick overview and uh, prioritize the uh, vulnerabilities accordingly. And we'll be back in a month when we report about the Microsoft Patch Day of February 2011. Thank you very much and stay secure.